Hey, Blender Bob here. I am not at home right now, so I apologize if you hear a lot of chicken sounds. Well, that's the way it is now. <laughs> okay, so this clip is about intersecting two cylinders together. There are many clips on YouTube that talks about the subject. Well, here's my take on it. Okay, so let's start with a cylinder with 32 subdivisions. I'm going to rotate it in 90 degree in X. And then I'm going to create another one with 64 divisions this time. And I'm also going to rotate it 90 degrees in X. Okay, I can make it invisible. I don't need to see it. Now we'll insert some edge loops until I get a bunch of squares. Okay, time to use a modifier. Here we're going to use a shrink surface modifier on this one. And the target will be the other cylinder that we created before. You don't really need to do this. This is only if you really want an absolutely perfect geometry. Okay, now I'm going to select some polygons. I'm going to take a grid of 5x5. Five five. Could be 2x2, two 3x3, two, 4x4. Three four four. Doesn't matter. And now we're going to use a function from Loop Tools. It's an add-on that comes free with Blender, and we're going to do Circle. Now you want to make sure here in the option that the flat is not on, otherwise it's going to try to make it flat, and we don't want that. We want to keep the curvature of the cylinder. So you just turn it off, and it should be all good. Okay, at this point we want to select all the vertices around this circle that we just created. We're going to go into the vertex menu and we're going to choose smooth vertices and you can play with the settings to get the smoothing that you want. You can crank it up to 100 if you want. And because we have a shrink surface, we're going to keep the perfect continuity. Now you see this point, this is not good. We don't want this on the edge of our circle. So we need to fix it. I'm going to select this and uh, well, we don't see what we're doing. So I will just turn this on here. Okay, so now we can see what we're doing and we're going to inset this surface. So we just inset it a little bit so that we get a clean edge around the circle. If you try to extrude your circle and it doesn't work, that's because you still have the shrink modifier. So just apply it and then you can do it. This time again, we're going to insert some edge loops. We're trying to get some squares. Okay, this is a common mistake that people do. You take the face here and you inset it, let's say two times, and then you poke the center here, so you just go into face and you poke it, poke, 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 poke. And then you delete one out of two edges and say, hey, it's all quads, right? Turns out it's actually pretty bad because if I take these polygons and I smooth them, you will end up with these weird polygons here. And you have this pole in the center with way too many edges. The maximum amount of edges that you want connected to a vertices is five, like here. And I created this edge here around just to make sure we don't have it in the intersection. If you ever give me a geometry like this, you're gonna do push-ups. Let's try again. I will insert the face twice and I will delete it. Then I will select the edge and I will go grid fill. So now we get this grid here. I will extend the selection here, grow it up. And I will smooth it again like we did before. And you can crank it up as much as you want until it doesn't smooth anymore. Because all the edges are super clean, the bevels are gonna work just great. And you never need more than two divisions for bevels that small. Oh, we can do a better job here at the end, so I will just select these polygons, and again I will do a smooth vertices. Smooth vertices, uh, smooth, smooth vertices, and crank it up. Now it's too much, so maybe I want to reduce it, because 100 I think it's too much, this is not doing much. So we'll reduce this until I get something that will work. Uh, uh, Okay, yeah, that's not too bad. The normals look kind of funky after the bevels, so you can go here and add a weight normal modifier. That's going to fix everything. And once you're done with it, you can just apply it and bye-bye. If you used a bevel modifier instead, you can do it straight in the modifier. So you have bevel here and you go into shading and you will have hardened normals. Just turn this on. So now this is VFX approved, so if you work at a big studio, this is what they will require, something that clean with all the polygons evenly distributed, because now you can bring it into ZBrush, you can bring it into Substance, you can sculpt it, you can do whatever you want, it's always going to work. You can do simulations into Houdini, it's watertight, it's going to work. So this is what you are looking for when you do topology, you want everything to be that clean. Now I'm adding a multi-level subdivision so I can try to sculpt it. I'm working on a 2008 laptop. I'm not at home on my crazy machine and I'm recording at the same time. So the computer is having a hard time doing anything. Even editing this clip was a total nightmare. So now when I paint on it, it's like super crazy slow. But you can see it works very well on this geometry because, hey, perfect topology. Okay, so that's it for now. The next clip will be when I come back to Montreal.